viewers, 4th July 2024 is the date today. And today we're going to see how, the mo how our prayer, the Lord's Prayer, was really ending. And the words that ended the Lord's Prayer and their true meaning. Let's not forget, today we are seeing a series of the Lord's Prayer and the different meanings of the different statements of the Lord's Prayer. But before we start, I'm inviting you to close our eyes for a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, uh, please help us learn your word. Let us study and understand it. Inspire us with thy Holy Spirit, Lord, to know and understand what you want us to learn. In your precious holy name I pray. Amen. So, as we end the Lord's Prayer, we, we hear start such statements. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. These are the words that end up the Lord's Prayer. And our scripture reading is extracted from the book of Chronicles, the chapters 29 and the verses 11 to 15. And it says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory and the majesty, for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you're exalted as head. Overall, both riches and honor come from you, and you reign overall. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. War was happening in a certain country. But during war, as the soldiers were planning to go and attack their fellow soldiers, a young gentleman stood in a corner. Now this gentleman was so unique in his character. As he stood, the commander gave order to go forward and fight. Unfortunately, the whole army was not going. The commander came to inquire why the army was not going to start fighting. And he was simply told they're waiting for one soldier who had requested to go and spend some time with his God before they go to war. The commander was surprised and disgusted. But in him, he knew there is a soldier who had respect for the one and true God. True to his word, this soldier did very many strange things that helped his fellow soldiers during the war. As we read the Lord's Prayer, there tends to be differences from when the starting statements, Our Father who art in heaven, and there's a great difference from the final statement. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Now, what is this difference? We see as the Lord's Prayer is decreasing or declining or being finished, the psalmist tends to praise or open up his eyes to the one true God, recognizes, remembers him, and praises him. Now, this is not only found in the Lord's Prayer. We see in the Old Testament, the Psalms, and in the New Testament, mainly in Paul's episodes, we find these forms of liturgical prayer that recognize and celebrate the glory of God. So as we finalize our Lord's Prayer, we start to recognize the glory, greatness, and presence of God and worthy of his worship. Now, having expressed our request for bread, our daily bread, forgiveness, 
after begging divine help in struggles from power of evil, we must now turn our eyes on the gospel or the true rewarder of the true author who gives authority to all the above. Now, there are two dangers while we are praying. During our prayer, we always have two dangers. Now, we have a certain group of people who pray and their prayers are just a recital. They recite prayers and the prayer is just like a poem. The type of prayer or this type of prayer gives indicates a lack of closer relationship with their God or a lack of recognition of the true God. When you have a straight relationship with God, your relationship boosts. The true dangers while praying, one is falling to think about what we say and like robots we repeat everything daily. So, but the prayer that God really, really loves and understands is the prayer, first of all, that pleases God, is one that takes into account the real presence of God. The prayer that takes real account of the presence of God. One in which we establish a dialogue with him. Brethren, we all go to God in prayer. But there's one difficulty. Praying without recognizing the presence of the true God. Most of us go to pray and it's just a fulfillment of prayers and rituals. So yours is reads the Lord's Prayer. Yours is the King David prayed. Our real existing belongs and it's contained by God. So as we finalize the Lord's Prayer, we find terms like yours, yours, yours is what we are, what we become, divine fulfillment of our request. So, in conclusion, everything in this world depends today, tomorrow, and the day after. Depends on recognizing the true author and giver of everything. This is God himself. Magnificent, magnificent, power, glory, honor, all belong to God. So as you pray, you recognize, do you recognize the presence of whom you're praying to? Are you talking a poem or are you conversing with God? Is your relationship close to him? That is the difference of all prayers. However, the morning devotion writer is trying to tell us, when we pray, let us recognize the greatness and the goodness of the true, mighty, and lovely God. So today I invite you to recognize the sovereignty of God in your life, remembering that will, remembering that will help you better cope with the cares of life. As we pray, let us remember our Heavenly Father. Let us not go into prayers and we make poems or poets. By recognizing God, we won't make prayers that are rituals or poems. We will know the actual God we are praying to. May God bless you. In conclusion, the Lord's Prayer concluded with the recognition of the true, mighty, and wonderful God. And the morning devotion writer is trying to request you to recognize his presence. It will make your prayers more meaningful and it will strengthen your relationship with him. May God bless you. Thank you for listening. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you. Recognize your presence. Help us always remember as we pray to recognize your severity and your greatness. In your precious holy name I pray. Amen.